Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. La haula wala quwwata illa billah. Uh, yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Faizal Rafiq uh, Muhammad uh, Adikan, Knight Chancellor University uh, Science Malaysia. Uh, yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Nasrudin uh, Muhammad Pengarah ACAP. Kita berjumpa lagi Datuk. Uh, dua hari sudah kita berjumpa. Rakan-rakan <laughs> uh, USM, rakan-rakan uh, UIA, rakan-rakan uh, universiti uh, lain. Uh, saya terlebih dahulu melafazkan syukur kepada Allah SWT kerana diberi izin berjumpa dalam satu seminar ataupun webinar yang amat dekat di hati saya. Yeah. Community engagement is something that uh, I have learned from uh, in USM. Uh, in fact, I, I gain a lot uh, from USM being the place where it is situated in the site of activ activism. Yeah. Uh, Pulau Penang is a site of activism. You have things like CAP, you have Sabat Alam, you have all the activities that students would probably miss in a classroom. And I benefited from that when I was a student in 1971. Yeah? My classroom was divided into two, the formal classroom, which is often a boring one, uh, and the one that's outside, uh, which is often a more invigorating one, that you learn more out of the textbooks from experience of like uh, Arwa S. M. Idris, yeah, and now we have got uh, Dato uh, Anwar Fazal. Uh, there's a number of them who have left this place or have left the world. But these are teachers, uh, in a way, that are not recognized. These are un under my unsung heroes uh, that train me, and not only in in in, the, in my knowledge, but the way of thinking. Yeah? So, kalau yang katakan bahawa mengapa Zul ni lain dari segi uh, tindak tanduknya, in a way that I'm very frank, I'm very provocative and I'm also very insightful in many ways. That comes from them. Uh, they are the one who teach me, if you want to make change, you have to have this kind of a passion. Yeah? Kalau kita duduk, dengar, angguk-angguk saja, and then keluar, and then go back to where we were, then I think no change will come. And in my last 40 years in the education system, uh, convince me that we have not done enough because we have not spoken enough. We have not... Uh, represent uh, the society enough yeah and and that is what this is a message that i want to bring across to you that the university has got a whole commitment uh, to the community outside the community outside is where uh, our responsibility belongs kita seolah-olah sebagai wakil mereka uh, half of the time they don't know what's going on and we are supposed to to represent them to tell uh, the world at large what is it that is required of them because half of them are not even accessible to an university. Despite bangunan kita tersergam indah, but we also got a very, uh, what you call, uh, gate, yeah? Yang mengatakan only certain people can go come in, certain people uh, are not allowed to come in and so on and so forth. So those are the legacies of university that are things that needs to be challenged. Those are the legacies of university that COVID say we are already out of sync. Uh, that COVID says that unless and until you leave with the people around you, all of us will be dead tomorrow. I think that's a very, very important lesson that all of, of all of us must take home. Yeah, so our responsibility is that responsibility, and particularly in the context of leadership. Yeah? So I would like to thank university, particularly uh, the vice chancellor, uh, for gathering three ex vice chancellors, if only you can bring uh, Tansi Musa in, I think we got a full component of uh, the living vice chancellors of USM. But to get three out of four, Alhamdulillah, uh, Dato uh, Rafiq, I think is is a is a good <laughs> is a good indication. I've not seen uh, any conference that bring their their vice chancellors in in, in such a big numbers. Eh? I also want to caution you: the, the the bio data was that was read is basically a kind of a fake bio data because none of it will resemble the thing that I I will talked about. Yeah, in this I'm not I'm not I'm not trained in this. There's no qualification for this. These are all learning out of the way. Yeah, belajar, learning on the job, learning by doing, and that becomes quote unquote the, the credentials that I will bring to you. Uh, in, in a kind of experience. If you ask me, apa dia punya qualification, Tan Sri, uh, I will tell you I don't have any qualification. If you're looking for qualification, then I will be disqualified almost automatically. Yeah. So I'm sharing you some of this experience and some of this experience uh, will be difficult to gain uh, in the sense that things have changed, things have moved along. The USM has got, what, 50 years experience. 
and I was there right uh, from the beginning of GSM, from the very first uh, vice chancellor, Hamza Hasanud, very inspirational, uh, very professional, and very academic in his thing. Uh, he's he's not liked by many people because he speaks the truth and he says what he wants. So finally, that is the that is the, I think that is the decision eh, that every vice chancellor needs to make, whether you are in a popularity contest or when you are really there uh, for business to make education work the way it should be. All right. So let let us begin. Kalobole, I will share my screen. Okay. So community engagement is is a beautiful word. Community engagement is a word that makes me alive. Uh, as long as the community is around, I think we are in business. When the community say uh, we don't want one two, I think we are out of business. Yeah. Uh, community to me is a is a larger set of industry. Uh, I also recognize uh, the way industry works with the university, but to me the priority is community first, industry second. Yeah. But right now we said it is look as though the industry first, community second, because uh, I think the community is the one that is very attached to us, very close to us. And in, in, in now in Gomba, uh, we have got a community orang, or, 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 kamp, Kampung Sungai Pusu and Kampung Orang Asli, and two largest community uh, around the university that we are trying to make amends with and see how we can learn from them, uh, apart from uh, from learning uh, learning from us. Yeah? Uh, the credential of the university, as I've seen here, where we, 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 we won the, uh, the Golden Gown Award in the year 2020, uh, being an institution for sustainability, we are recognized just like USM using the experience from the UNU as a regional center of expertise for sustainable development. And very recently, we are given the UNESCO chair for future studies. Uh, we are here to sort of predict what the future looks like. And certainly the areas of uh, the areas of uh, committee engagement is one of those areas that we are working very closely to see how we can change the university. Kalau uh, Datuk VC tadi cakap about, you know, trying to find the uh, what's a way to measure this? Uh, we, inshallah, will have another project that we are quite happy to share with anybody. We are now sharing with UPM. Uh, how do you make committee engagement as part and parcel of the university mission, not just a site, a site line or something which is fashionable? I think the university belongs to the community and the university needs to articulate that in, in a very clear terms. So when you talk about leadership, I think that often we are, we are always given this, you know, what is a good leader? So everybody will say what's a good leader, communication, and all and all those things. And different people will say different things. Yeah. But I take this from the guru of uh, of leadership and management, Peter Drucker. Uh, he always says this: leaders are people who do the right things. Uh, it, this becomes uh, my uh, departure point. What is the right thing? Yeah. Uh, what is the right thing to do? Is community engagement the right thing to do, or are we uh, here about something else? Uh, anything that uh, not uh, re related to community, uh, for example. Yeah? So what is the right thing to do is I think is a prerogative of all leaders uh, to find out this is I want to do because it's all contextualized. Uh, USM cannot be the same as IIUM, although we are called universities, but your context and my context are quite different. I can, I can leave this. Uh, in USM, I can do many things that UIA will not tolerate, right? And of course, the vice versa. Because the contexts are different, uh, the, the reason that of the university is different, but that doesn't mean it is right or wrong. I think this is where we started off wrong, by saying that every university must sound and, and smell the same. Yeah? Uh, my first uh, objection when I was a uh, vice chancellor in USM is to call pelajar pelajar kita HEPA, hal ehwal pelajar dan alumni. I don't want to be HEPA. I just want to be. Halewal dan pembangun pelajar. So we call ours HAPP. We are the only university that is not HEPA because we think HEPA. I want to put alumni somewhere else. I don't want to put alumni under 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 Timbalan Nap Chancellor. To me, alumni must be under Nap Chancellor because they gain the rights uh, to tick to talk about the university. After all, they are our alumni and they are doing well. So those kind of uh, sentiments do not exist yeah, in our university. Uh, we take things as it comes. So, kalau, uh, kalau research will be happy, uh, HEPI, -E uh, happy uh, pembangunan dan inovasi. Uh, we do not call ourselves happy, uh, we call ourselves uh, now here is responsible research and innovation. The word responsible has meanings of it. So, we are, we are supposed to decide what we want to do because we have a different inclination. 
So these labels has given to us that constrain us, constrains our thinking, constrains our action needs to be done with. Yeah, and I, 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 I this is my first, my first uh, suggestion that uh, uh, VSM is good in 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 the, in the committee engagement. Uh, where is it in, in the, the portfolio of VSM that sees committee engagement? Yeah. In IUM, uh, my de deputy rector is student uh, development and committee engagement, very clearly spelled. And we know committee engagement is alive in IUM because of that. Because of that designation, belong to one person. So we need to be very clear of what what are the right things to do by just putting the right nomenclature to tell people who you are, and therefore you can be, you can be recognized uh, for for that for that purpose. Of course, you also need to deliver at the same time. Yeah. So if, if leaders are the people who do the right thing, then I think we need to tell managers are the people who do things right. So maknanya, our managers, the people, the bottom line, yang, yang ni, the, bot, uh, the down line yang kerja dengan kita, if, we do, if you do the wrong things, then they do the right thing. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah? Uh, so kita katakan kita nak pergi seremban, uh, everybody uh, wants to go to maybe uh, somewhere else. Uh, then they were prepared to go to somewhere else rather than going to Sremban. And we will not end up in Sremban. So there is this link between the doing the right things and doing the things right. Uh, often kita rasakan we are supposed to doing the things right. Yeah? Uh, somebody decides for us and we just do the things right. But actually the whole idea is wrong. I think this is the confusion that we have at the moment in time. Who, who is the one who calls the shot? Who are doing the right things? Yeah? And I believe the academic leaders will have to do the right things because they are academic leaders, they are not political uh, or whatever, whatever other leaders. So I think this is a point that needs to be uh, to be put in place uh, correctly uh, otherwise. Yeah? And then we go into assumptions. Uh, when we talk about leaders, and then, uh, then there's also a difference between leaders and boss. Yeah, uh, You can see boss too, these are totally loyal people. You know? You can do whatever you want with the boss. They are still loyal to the boss uh, for one reason or the other. Uh, we will not go into that. Yeah? And, and leaders are the one that is right stuck in front. Yang uh, pakai merah tu and yang lain semua right behind. Right. So there is one man that stays up front. There is a leader. But when when you go to the community, this concept of leaders change entirely. The community does not have this kind of a perspective of a leader, and therefore the word pemimpin kalau kita gunakan is like this. Memimpin is to hold hands together and walk together. Yeah. Uh, so there is no one single person that you can distinguish. This is my leader uh, because he stays in front. He doesn't stay in front. In fact, he is very much in the crowd. People do not know who is the leader uh, in that sense uh, because he is being singled out uh, physically or otherwise. Yeah. People will recognize him as a leader later on uh, when, you know, when people pay respect to him or listen to him. You know, there's certain distinction about the leaders from the way he behaves rather from the position that he's given. Yeah? Uh, therefore, in, in this kind of a situation, uh, when you go into, in, into a, a, a village or a kampung, uh, you need to understand this. Yeah? Uh, kadang -kadang kita, as a leader, we, we want to earn the same respect that we earn somewhere else. Yeah, we want special seat, we want special designation, we want special this, special that, just because we are so used to this being treated specially. And I think when that is the first thing that I think we need to, 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 to put right. Bila kita masuk ke kampung, we are one of many. Uh, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what title you've got, uh, doesn't matter apa ni, uh, what, what are your experiences, you are just that normal human person and in fact, your presence there will not be felt until very much later when you get to know them and they get to know you. So I think the concept of pemimpin ini bagi saya is important because at the end of the day, the hierarchy is totally flattened. Yeah? Uh, me and my driver, when we go to, when we go to the old kampung, uh, we sit, we stay in the same table. Uh, doesn't matter. We drink from the same uh, pot. Uh, that is expected. Yeah, so we don't have this distinction. Uh, orang yang bawah duduk meja lain, kita duduk meja asing and stuff like that. And we don't also uh, try to make the difference and try to say that I'm the leader, you know, the rest are just my followers, things like that. And those things are not important. So this value system 
of what the community is all about and how the community pay respect to you and you respect the, 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 the community is of a different uh, language, a different uh, to, uh, context altogether. And how many of us actually can behave in, in the kampong because we are all trained to behave in an industry. Yeah. Uh, pakai kot, pakai tie. Some of people go to kampung, pakai kot, pakai tie, pakai kulit, pakai kasut kulit juga. Uh, it all means that we are macam rusa masuk kampung lah. Yeah? We do not know how to bring ourselves to the level of where we should be and how we should behave in a different situation, in a different situation together. So that's the first thing I think that wants to, to come in mind. The second thing, why do you want to do this? Is this because fashionable? It is because, you know, uh, you get many uh, Myra points on this or all the other things that have been told. But for me, it is because it is right there in the Fasafa Pendidikan Kebangsaan, which generally is of two parts. There are many parts of this, but I will just talk about the two parts here. One is the individuals, the kind of individual that the Fasafa want to aspire. This is uh, people who is balanced yeah, harmoniously, intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and believe in the, in the firm belief and devotion to God, right? And that process is an ongoing process and so on and so forth. That needs to be understood in the context of where we are before we go into the kampong, all right? Now, the moment we go into the kampong, then the second part kicks in. And that means they got to, these people will be this Malaysian citizen then the knowledgeable, the competency, the moral standards, and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, these words, eh, we, are, we are trying to uh, articulate this almost 20 years now, uh, when we started in USM, kesejahtera and diri, what is the word sejahtera is all about? Why is this important? Because they got to, unless you sejahtera diri, then you are not able to contribute to the harmony and betterment of the family, society, and nation. There you are, the word society. So, manajah, the word society is waiting for your contribution. But only and only if you can exhibit this kesejahteraan diri. Yeah? If you don't have this, then I think the community will suffer more from you. Kita panggil kesengsaraan diri, which is the opposite of sejahtera. Yeah? Uh, this will be the drug addicts, this will be the bullies, this will be you know, uh, people who exploit, this will be, uh, we can list this endlessly. And these are the people who have been, uh, what I call, uh, exploiting and, 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 and living on the society. Uh, for their for their own sake, and then the society suffers because of this one or two individuals or a group of individuals that actually uh, what's the word that I want to to use huh? uh, that make use of society for their own uh, benefit. Yeah, and here is the, in 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 this tandem. Yeah, you want to do a fam you want to do the society. You must do the family first, and therefore the new the new corner Kluarga Malaysia. I think it's very appropriate. Yeah, in the, in the context of family, a larger society, and then from that we build a nation. So it has to go from that. If we don't have your society, if we, if we don't have your family well created, then you can forget about your, your society because the outcome of that will be another miserable society. And from a miserable society, you will get a miserable nation. And from a miser miserable nation, you'll get a miserable world. And this is what it is today. Yeah. So the very basic, the individual the family, the society, and then the nation. And so we work on the society not because it is fashionable, because it is part of that continuum. It's part of the continuum. The individual translates into the family, and the family translates into this. If you don't have that continuum, then the society becomes, you know, just another, another uh, place where people try to make a living. And therefore, when we go to a society, we don't look at the society per se, we also look at the individuals in the society. Because those individuals are the ones that will contribute uh, to society or the community at large. Yeah? So there is a second, the second reason, a very strong reason for me, why we need to work with society, not because it's fashionable, because it's part and parcel of what education means to us, uh, based on our falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. And this also tells us there is no one way of doing things. I, can, I keep on con talking about context. Yeah? Your context and my context are different. We are, we are supposed to be different. Uh, and therefore, we say that no two persons or no two systems are alike because they evolve under a diverse a local social cultural roots, uh, knowledges, and also uh, education. Knowledges are purposely plural because we're beginning to recognize now not only the dominant knowledge of the West, but also our own knowledge, indigenous or otherwise. 
So these are also bona fide knowledge that needs to be mainstream, that needs to be put together in the context of what the society is all about, because that society has been evolving and living on that knowledge. They don't know any of this knowledge outside of their society, yet they are able to aspire and become what they are. Yeah? And, and so if, if two people think alike, then one, one is redundant. Yeah, I often remind this to my colleagues when I was in USM and even here. If there are two people, if the VC and the deputy VC thinks alike, then one of us is redundant. One of us must go. Lah. Uh, you know, why are we wasting people's money? Because we are thinking the same anyway. Yeah? So everybody must aspire to think differently given their own context. And this is what enriches the university. But sometimes we one size fits all. Everybody must think alike. Then I think all of us are redundant in that particular context because we don't contribute anything new. Yeah, we became, become an excess baggage in the world in, in a way because I think we do not yeah, contribute anything constructive which is new. So these are very hard points that you need to realize that you need to be very adventurous. And that's so the word creativity, the word innovation becomes important because we want to strike new deals. And I, I would like to congratulate the uh, USM also for showing that Kelulut, uh, Kelulut uh, video. Uh, here also we have this Kelulut in UIA, but we have not arrived at that stage perhaps, and maybe we can learn from you in this, in this context. Yeah? So that's the other assumption that we need to think about. When we go into the community, are we thinking about the same thing? Yeah? Uh, Poto Wumpot, everybody Poto Wumpot. Yeah? Chat, chat Masjid, everybody Chat Masjid. What other things different that we can do so that it becomes a part of learning that is very constructive, that is very uh, innovative, and it relates to the life of the person that we're working in, not another textbook solution uh, that often do not, do not work. Yeah? I want to go then into, into this whole idea of making it global. Yeah? So these four pillars of learning of UNESCO, which is uh, uh, revealed at the same time of the Fasa Fah Pendidikan Kebangsaan in 1996, that talks about very much the same thing that we are talking about. The four pillars of learning, they got it learning to know, learning to do, learning to be, and learning to live together. Now, we are good in learning to know and learning to do, right? All our life had been about this learning to know and learning to do, but very, very poor at learning to be. And what is learning to be? Learning to be is to know who you are, yeah, so that you become this all-rounded, complete person. And these words have never been articulated in our in our system. We want a complete person. We use the word holistic, but it, it, it's, it's shy away from this whole idea of can we psychoanalyze ourselves? Do we know who we are effectively and physically? Because this is important the moment, we, you, the moment you go into the community. You must know who you are, either your values or your, your thinking. How can you then realign or otherwise with the community so that you don't go into a kind of a confrontational way of looking at it? And to have that analysis for that individual, it is very important. And that's why we find that the people who are successful in, in communities are the people who actually know themselves. And they know how to carry themselves. Yeah? Membawa di dalam 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 masyarakat, as as we said in this, our context. And then you can live together, and you live together in the context of the values that you have, and that values must relate to the larger question of human right, democracy, intercultural understanding, the human relationship, and so on and so forth. So that at the end of the day, we can bring this peace and harmony around it. Now, if we cannot do this, then I think grooving the kampong becomes more of a liability rather, rather than a, a benefit in such. Yeah? So that is another, another point that I think we want to look at. So it is a global thing. When UNESCO brought this, it talks about us going to the global, to the global scene. And uh, not within our kampong, of course, it's also relevant. But how do you go to another dimension that you do not sort of uh, sell your soul, as it were? Yeah, we go to 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 some places. Sometimes we come back more uh, foreign than the foreigners themselves, because we do not know who we are, and therefore we imbibe everything that was given to us as though that we have nothing to offer uh, in the world in the world as such. Right? This is, I think, a very important point where Peter Drucker, the guy who says the leaders are doing the right thing, we are becoming aware that the major questions regarding technology are not technical. So stop blaming the technical things. Basically, it is us. It's a human question. We have not articulated it well. We have not done our homework, and therefore the, 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 te the technology does not perform the way it's supposed to perform because everything else is not 
put in the perspective that it should be. Yeah, you talk about online, uh, online uh, uh, for the, uh, education where places there is no connectivity. So what good it is? Yeah, I've been to places where they got the uh, kampung tam, kampung tanpa wire, wireless kampung. All right, uh, and literally there's no wire and there's no electricity also. So nothing can be done, and that is not. A technical question that's our question that fails to give what is supposed to be there as far as as far as the kampong is concerned so it is the human question i think that's important rather than so stop bringing just more technology until and unless we solve the human question first because it will not uh, answer to a question unless that issues are, are, are sorted out and this is where the negotiation with the kampong people making them understand making them trust us is something of very core values as far as that's concerned so now given all those things uh, i'm asking myself are we doing the right things yeah going back a little bit to the history of, of university we, we go to the 19th century particularly after the industrial revolution all right uh, what is university for the whole question has been sort of uh, turned upside down yeah so if i were to, to give you a very concise answer universities are now meant for three or four things one is to create manpower for what for the industry one is to create to create our mind to be creative innovative for what for the industry one is to machine machine is for what again provided by the industry at the end of the day our lives are all contextualized into this marketplace and hence you have the word marketability employability which has now become the core business of vice chancellors around around the country at least yeah you have to score certain things before you can be successful all right and you look at the picture here this is what the industry looks like in the 19th century and this is how what the school looks like in the 19th century and this all happens in europe yeah and we just take this as part and parcel of the university at that particular point and we are here at the moment in time so 20th, 20th century yeah we thought things have changed um, things has changed physically there is a new factory now a little bit better colorful you know more spacious and uh, more human in in, in 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 a sense but the school also has not changed yeah and you can go to the best school you can go to harvard they still sit this way you can go to oxford they still sit this way they have no other ways of doing this because we are just contextualized within that particular uh structure that is given to us out of the industrial revolution that wants to mass produce and we become part of the mass production and numbers names will change we don't call ourselves manpower now the woman is very unhappy because they're very sexist so we change it to human capital yeah human capital there's no gender there so we are producing the human capital so we hear speeches from from leaders as say kita nak membuat modal insan yang terbaik yeah uh, what is terbaik uh, it depends on yeah, what is a modal insan to you but there's a whole theory on human capital theory that talks against education yeah uh, it is a different question altogether uh, we talk about intelligences now uh, iq eq sq and all those things uh, all is now the resemblance of the mind the same frame uh, the technology we talk about is we talk about high tech but all again is all contextualized into 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 the marketplace yeah i often give this example at least when i was in usm when you want to introduce a course, we thought it is important, then the commentary will say, commentary will say, and have what market survey? Ke? Uh, kita kata belum. Okay, do market survey. Kita buat market survey lah. Then the market survey, then they, they say, what does the market say? Market say they don't want this, this apa ni, khusus tentang falsafah ni. Dia kata tak ada market value. Uh, kita tak payah offer lah. Yeah? Although kita rasakan falsafah ini penting, and that's why falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan remains at the bottom. Uh, because nobody wants to recognize it as something which is important for education per se, particularly the market when they don't understand what this FASAFA is all about. So we are we are stacked against this. And this is where I think we are moving away from the community because the community doesn't seem to be like a good marketplace. Yeah. They, 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 don't, they don't offer employment, employability that was promised to us at least at one point before the COVID. And now we are behaving in a way that is not they are not relevant as far as we're concerned so i call this education without soul pendidikan tanpa roh yeah we do all the things but the human value the humanistic value the the, the values that the, we cherish as a community do not exist in that particular in that particular realm of 
of trying to give education the way we understand it today. So now we are in a, in a, in a crossroad. Uh, everybody talks about technology. So where do we stand and how do we take this on board? Everybody knows one technology. So we hear the story, uh, the budak-budak they bagi apa, the peranti itu dan ini to the billions of dollars. Sometimes the peranti is useful. Sometimes the peranti is not useful. Uh, and then there are many other things that we skip into this. Yeah, it becomes an issue. But at the end of the day, I'm more I'm more interested in what this what sort of a person that it, it trains us. Yeah, we come we become a very mechanized person, a very uh, artificial person, learning from just you know that video stuff that we do not have the practical experience of, of what this is all. It shapes our mind, it shapes our uh, talent, it shapes our cultural values, it shapes even the way we interact with one another. Half of our children learn from this. What, how, do you, how do you behave in a Hollywood style uh, to your parents? Uh, we don't have this anymore in, in, in our context, so we learn it from this particular uh, medium that we've got, right? Whereas uh, formally, I think we used to do this. I still do this when I was in USM. Uh, half of the time we study under the tree. Yeah, uh, not, not, not because uh, it's fashionable, because we want to get to, to experience uh, what the ambient is all about, yeah? To experience the heat, to experience the sun, to experience the wind, yeah? Not just in an aircon room, which is now the downside as far as uh, COVID is concerned. And to also to experience the animals around us, yeah? And they are part and parcel of our, our, our life, uh, our existence. Uh, do we acknowledge them? Do we uh, recognize them? Uh, and this is part and parcel of education. That's why in USM, University Dalam Taman, and it was done for a purpose. Because we don't think the building is a university, we think the whole ambient is a university. And whole ambient is a fantastic ambient, as far as I am, I, I, I am concerned, yeah, and the Durian Valley and so on and so forth. And these are places that students must experience, not just the library and get stuck in the library or the labs, yeah, but these are the other labs that we need to we need to be part of. And these are the nature lab. These are the libraries that we can, uh, you know, extract information from. Your clue doesn't come from that. Your clue loot doesn't come from your, your library, no matter how good your lab says. The clue loot comes from nature. And you don't understand nature, you will not be able to, able to grow the, the clue loot that you have. Yeah? Uh, so that is, the, I think, the issue. So here you have, uh, you are here at the University Garden in uh, Garden of Knowledge and Virtue, another way of looking at it. But yet still, yeah, the whole ambient is a garden. How many of our students realize that the ambient that they are in is part of education? I don't think many of them would because we don't give the right emphasis. We are telling now this one need to go, yeah? And then when that day goes, then this also will go. So our ambient becomes dirty and not well looked after. Uh, it is not part and parcel of our business to make sure that the ambience stays clean and, and you know, and pristine the way it is. So again, uh, USM has got that, uh, the two padang, and when people go in, people are at odd with the padang because it's very meticulously looked after. And But that needs to tell the whole story, not just the padang, the whole story needs to be that way. Uh, all the upkeep of the, of the university needs to be as good as the padang, uh, as it were. So this is, I think, where we are at the crossroad now. Where are we going to take ourselves with this mindset to go into the kampong? They will kick you out immediately because you do not resemble them. You do not represent their values. You do not even understand where they come from. I think we need to start uh, from the very basic as far as community engagement is concerned. I just like to, because I work a lot with the, with the African, they are still very pristine in that particular state. And there are many things that we can learn from their experience. Yeah. Uh, to a certain extent that their knowledge is even better than the Europeans. If we just take the word Ubuntu, which is a very classical word in the many African uh, society, uh, Ubuntu is what sustains them. Ubuntu means I am because you are. There's already a relationship struck. I will not be here because we are not here. So there's already a relationship built that they need to live together. One needs to depend on the other. And the word Ubuntu uh, represents that. Yeah. We did not know what some of the oldest universities, there wasn't called university there, in Timbuktu, probably is the one of the world's uh, oldest universities. They have reconstructed what education is all about. And some of it is about here. 
the education is never ending. So we talk about lifelong learning. What is so new about lifelong learning when Africa has said it's never ending? Yeah, perhaps sometimes it's a stolen idea from, from other cultures that we just articulate in our own words. Yeah, everyone is involved in the education process. What is so new about no one left behind? They is it. The African has practiced this for a long time. Yeah. It's rooted in collectivism, not individualism. This is where society comes about. Yeah. And not only that, like what the VC said, now we go around and, and, and teach other people and share our knowledge with them. Yeah. And the sharing of knowledge is free of charge. It is not because of patent, it is not because we want to earn money. It is because sharing of knowledge and the sharing is something that is part and parcel of activities of knowledge sharing during that particular time. So if you go into the community and if you learn about the community, they are more magnanimous than we are. They are more human than we are. And they're more sincere than we are. I think that's the part that this whole modern uh, education has missed up. Everything must be done for a purpose. And the purpose often is because of money or because of name or because of fame. You don't have that. I don't want to work with you. You know, in fact, I have one people uh, not work with me and say, uh, I want to work with you because I want name and fame. If you cannot offer me this one, then I'm not going to work with you. So I say, never mind. Yeah, we are not in that business. We are in something else. So you need to give community what is due to them. They are not backward the way we think they are. In terms of wisdom, I think they are richer than, than we are. And we need to come to that. Yeah. So students in a, learn in a variety of ways when they talk there's no one path to learning including free play, look at our kindergarten, a lot of free play, immerse in nature and working with adults as community sort of business. I remember when we go mengaji dulu, lepas mengaji, what do we do? Angkat, angkat air, kapak uh, kayu, uh, basuh kain, yeah? uh, working for the guru yang kita mengaji, yes? a way to pay back. And that's part of community work. But now we don't do that anymore because our parents give them satu 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 ringgit for kita mengaji and after that we just walk off. Yeah? But I think the worth of working with them and making the community work as part and parcel of our due to the, the guru, I think it's a lot more than 100 ringgit or 200 ringgit or whatever money that we can pay. And those are the values again that we have lost. Yeah, and we look at this for how many proper per credit ni? Dua credit, ala dua credit tak mula nak enam credit. Uh, things like that. So those are the issues that are polluting our mind. And the community is bringing us back to what this all means to us as a community who actually wants to live together on a different platform rather than just buying a commoditized platform. So traditional knowledge system, therefore, are in that case more autonomous yeah, because they've got a lot more flexibility uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, in educating. I'll give you a simple example. When we work with the Orang Asli, they've got a thing called Kerchang. Kerchang is all, almost like a, a Rubik Cube, but more sophisticated than a Rubik Cube because they have got to understand and how to undo this Kerchang. And they've got 18 of this. And they will give to their children from the age of 6 until the age of 18 and how to solve problems using this you can imagine the Rubik cube for now, lah. Yeah, uh, at different different ages, different kind of difficulty, and therefore their thinking is very diverse. And I ask them, why do you do this? They got in 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 the jungle. If you meet a snake and you meet a tiger, the the, the solutions are different. For us or urban people, meet a snake and meet a tiger, the solution is the same. That you run away. Only one solution. For them, there are multiple solutions, and they need to develop this. And that's where this autonomy comes in, you know, to make them more uh, jungle friendly, as it were, and to survive their, their, their own uh, situation. So these, I think, the values that why, why I think this is important to do this. And I want to come back to where we are. Yeah? So where we are now, we are straight jacketed into a factory, a one size fits all factory with standardized curriculum, standardized uh, test, standardized result, standardized definition, everything else is standardized. And then we compete with one another like hell to show that we are good, right? Not because of we are diverse, not because we have got something better to offer, because within the standardization, how can we cut corners so that we become better? And that is the institutional system that we've got now, sans the committee engagement part because those values is lost. Those values is not there. 
So I am rebelling against this. I'm, I, I'm, I'm record to say this. I want to create a different university of a different uh, 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 way of looking at it because that model comes from this model. It's almost like making a bread. If you if you look at this properly, yeah, uh, this is a company uh, what you call the starting uh, material, yeah, and these are the uh, additive materials. If you want to make a roti badam, roti Christmas, you change this, and you can get. And you put it under a receptacle, and then then you put it into a, a conveyor belt, and a three or four conveyor belt, and finally you put in a lorry, and off it goes. Yeah, I just change the labels, and you get a, you get a university. Right, all our universities are like this. They're budak budak masuk. Uh, they are almost uh, the company, uh, the starting point. Not jadi apa? Jadi doctor. Okay, doctor doctor. These are the things that you need. Now the engineer. These are the things that you need. Then you put into a, a receptacle. We call it a curriculum. Then we, we dispense into a classroom. And the classroom almost to me like a conveyor belt. Like we have got test. After the test, it pass. We go to second conveyor belt, third conveyor belt, fourth conveyor belt, and then graduation. Yeah, convocation. And the convocation uh, will tell us whether uh, the product is good at all point when it comes to marketability. So we need to submit to the ministry. Kita adalah 80% marketability. Oh, we are very good, man. Yeah. Uh, kalau kita kurang marketability, no, you are not good because you cannot market this to them. It's just like marketing a bread. Of course, you can market the bread simple because they're all the same. How do I market three different people who have three different talents and three different inclinations and different views? Unless I standardize those views, then I can compare them. And this is what we've been doing. We are now not doing what we're supposed to do in terms of cherishing the diversity among our students. So, so we get into this assembly line education, and then the, really, that's where the problem starts. Yeah? So everything now, because of that, has gone into a very uh, poor state, be it economy, be it ecology, be it the social structure, be it the environment. All these are under destruction because we are all not thinking the way we should be thinking, neither can we appreciate what the environment is all about. Our environment is just a classroom and what is, is, is offering it. Yeah? And that is where I think this whole question of community engagement by Gisaya becomes important, that we need to start thinking outside of the box, the, given the paradigm that we've got now, the unsustainable paradigm, and the, 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 the evidence for this is quite clear. Yeah? Just take global warming and climate change, Sajila. As an issue, the many research has been done. Yeah, most of the research we see is all because of us. It's be all because of us. Yeah, manusia ni. Tak kira ada degree tak ada degree. In fact, there's one study that said the other degree lagi teruk because you're so straight jacketed in what has been given to you as compared to orang yang tak ada degree. They still have the flexibility of thinking. They are not being quote unquote brainwashed aside. Yeah. So these many of these people mengatakan bahawa kesudahannya this is the problem. Our student ourselves. Our university is a problem. We are guilty there. Yeah? But ironically, when we are guilty, we still pretend as though we are the best. We still tell people this must change, that must change, everything else must change, policy must change. But we didn't say that I must change. Yeah? And I go to university, I must change. Not I become the same hardened, hardwired person who I failed before just because this is what everybody around us wants. And how do we rebel against this? How do you transform this, if you want to use a more polite word, to make things change within ourselves first? And this is what it is. Yeah? How do we balance between our internal world and the world outside? There is a link with this. Yeah? And this is what the word Sajatra means to us. Yeah? How do you link it? Otherwise, we go into what we call the Anthropocene age, which is now already on board. That this Anthropocene age, by definition, is we human beings are going to dismantle our own civilization. We already dismantled so many of our kampung. Pilihan saja, I think, 10 kampung now, if I'm not mistaken from the study that I read, are already at verge of being defunct. Once you lose a kampung, you lose it all. Yeah, You're already losing one in front of the, in front of the university itself, but the university cannot do much. Yeah? Just as much as uh, kampung Kurinci and kampung Abdullah Hukum is lost at the University of Malaya, you cannot get it back. Yeah? And this is the kampung that's been existing the, for 200 years, a multiracial kampung around that. But we cannot defend it. Now, Kampung Kurinci and Kampung Sungai uh, Abla Hukum is just a blip on the on the LRT. That's it. Our new generation do not understand what is it is. And he called it now uh, Bangsa South, which is not even part of Bangsa. 
uh, these are the things that, that really worries me that we as academics and educational uh, apa ni, uh, experts, quote unquote, are, are very, very oblivious, oblivious to this because it's not part of my record, because it's not part of uh, you know the things that counts. At the end of the day, I think we're going to lose it. And we're going to lose this whole idea of Sajjata at the same time when, when I talk about it. Yeah. So Attenborough said it very well. The Garden of Eden is no more. We have changed the world so much that scientists say we are in a new ge ge geological age called the Anthropocene, the age of humans that destroys its own uh, civilization because of the greed, because of the time, things that we are professing today uh, through our education system. So we need to change the structure, which is a very hierarchical. I hope university is better than this in terms of its, you know, in terms of its uh, 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 hierarchy. Eh? We, are, we need to be more flattened than this. Uh, people call this egocentric because we human beings seems to be dominating. Not only we human beings, we men. The women pun tak boleh. Kita men saja. Men pun of different structure je. Men must be white sometimes. Uh, living in the northern hemisphere. If you're not, then you're not bad. So this is an egocentric model that needs to give way. To give way to a more, uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, egalitarian system. Which is network, which is flexible, which is about us, which collaborates. And which is alive. Yeah? And in other words, this is the ecosystem that we want to create. Uh, as ecosystem that is alive, that is basically concerning about everything around us, not just as a human person, but as a whole entity of uh, people who inhabit this planet, including the plants, including the animals, and so on and so forth. And that is, I think, the shift that we are going to go into. And this shift, I think, is already been forcing on us when it comes to coronavirus. Yeah? So let me very quickly run through this. I think you, are, you, you know this. Uh, uh, the four things that I talked to you about, the intellectual, physical, uh, spiritual, and you just look at our curriculum. Is are all this there? Are they in a state of balance? Yeah? Mungkin kita ada the intellectual component, a little bit of the physical because of co-curriculum. What is the emotional part? Where is the spiritual part? Now it's very stuck under this under the under the uh, finish lockdown uh, our students are not able to cope because they are not trained to be resilient emotionally and spiritually in other words we have lost two very large component of education that makes that that balanced human being yeah so balanced human beings have been uh, there for a long time there's another piece of art by leonardo da vinci apart from mona lisa but people do not recognize it somehow but he has been trying to measure what is a perfect balanced human being, at least physically, right? And there is one art called the Veterinarian Man that talks about uh, this is a dimension that you need. I think most of us uh, fail to meet this dimension. And the fig leaf is mine, eh? the rest uh, is, is Leonardo's. Uh, so we want to create this. This is the education system that we are talking about. It's only in the fast of our and individual that's balanced, harmonious. Yeah? And what is harmonious in a particular sense? We craft it into what we call this Makasid Asharia about protection of life, intellect, lineage, uh, wealth, and also faith. That will be the kind of foundation of what balance is all about. And that is, I think, acceptable internationally, even globally, because here we talk about the five elements of human existence. I've tested out in Europe. Yeah, I say these are the five elements of human existence. How many of you disagree? Yeah, very few, if any. All right. In fact, one of them said this is mind blowing. Why don't you think about this earlier? We have got it, but we have not talked about it because we think it is not Western enough and it's not, therefore, not worthy of sharing with other people. So we're working this and, and making sure that this is what our society is also all about. The social equity, the integration in terms of environment and also the prosperity that needs to be shared. Now we talk about wawasan kemamuran bersama is all about this. But how do you work it through education? Is education part of this? And I'm not too sure whether we are into this game of trying to do this. Yeah? So I want to come back to this because there is now a resemblance of this. If you talk about all these pillars of learning, they're exactly what the Fasafa Pudidikan Kubang says. Is. In different terms, perhaps. Yeah? But learning to know is about inter the intellectual part, learning to do about the physical part, learning to be about the spiritual part, and learning to live together is about the emotional part. Yeah? And this maybe we have done well, but when it comes to kampong or community, I don't think well enough because we don't know the complexity of the kampong. We are talking about just the banda kind of a, uh, arrangement, not one kampong and the values that I talked to you about. Yeah? Learning to do also 
you know, the way they do things and the way we do things, uh, perhaps it's not the same. So they, he, here again, we need to introspect and see what is it that is possible, right? But the worst is this, when we talk about the complete person, my interpretation of a complete person is a person who also uh, become responsible public intellectual. In other words, you need to be the mouthpiece of these people. Yeah? Why do some places have got flood for the last uh, five decades? Yeah? And there are three universities in that place now. Why are we not solving their problem? What is so difficult about solving floods when there are so many engineers around? Yeah? Why are we not talking about those issues? Why are we talking about something like e-sports, for example? What is e-sports to these people who have been flooding for the last 50 years? Where is our priority? Who are we in, in the context of the being public, public intellectual? Yeah. So where do we put our priorities is something that we need to understand who we are and where we're coming from, all right? And then there's the values that I talked to you about. What value proposition have we got? So that our priority begins to change because they have more humanistic values rather than just technical or technological values as such. Yeah. Uh, I think I will stop at maybe 10, 10, yeah? uh, one, one hour, 15 minutes. I can try and finish early. And otherwise, we see all this discrimination around us. Mula daripada orang OKU, orang KU kat USM, kita panggil orang kelainan upaya because we suddenly realize they've got better uh, keupayaan than us. You know, how many of us can draw with our mouth or our feet? Yeah? If you take that as a basic point, then we become the kurang-kurang upaya. So who are we to call them kurang-kurang upaya? I mean, para Olympic, they bring three gold medals, man. Yang tak upayanya doesn't bring any gold medal. So this terminology also color our mind, color our thinking, color our behavior towards these people. We need to pick the right terminology and saying the right things so that we can the right values at the same time. How many of us talk to them? How many of us speak up for them? How many of us talk about issues of this nature now when we talk about Black Lives Matters? Yeah, uh, we thought this is done already in America, the world best university, the world best country, but the racism is worse there as compared to even our place. Yeah, how, how, how many of us are doing the right thing? That's my question. To be a university, to do the right thing and to take on the leadership that we are supposed to do. I think I'm just going to end with a, with a simple with a simple thing. So we need now to go back to me. That's the four pillars of learning that has got its mirror image on falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. If I'm talking to a global uh, global audience, I will use this local audience. We can use falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan and say this very well also. So learning to know, we use our head, we create this knowledge that we know, not just knowledge that is dominant, but knowledge that is shared around us, that is relevant in our context, could be religious knowledge, could be indigenous knowledge, could be any other knowledges, I think that is important to make the community uh, ahead or to make them survive. Yeah? Then we need to work on these other areas of the head, the hands, and how can you work this together in combination? And there already you get two the intellectual and the physical and sort of dimension of Fasafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan. You bring in the heart, you learn learning to be, as I've mentioned, yeah? you create a lot more awareness, you create a lot more understanding of what this knowledge and what to do is all about because you have understand it, understood it from within you, right? And therefore, you can be a better person and there's maybe another two, uh, EQ and SQ, which is part of it, uh, as a kind of a measure perhaps, yeah? And at the end of the day, we want to bring this together. You remember this word, a complete person that I talked to you about, and they are equally comfortable with their head, their hand, and their heart working together. And that is what our attitudes are all about. Yeah? We are able to harness this together as that complete person that we talked about. And in our context, we call it insan sejahtera. They're integrated, they're holistic. If you read the Fasafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan lagi, the first statement mengatakan it is integrated and holistic. And these are the two words that we use in the context of the Fasafah, not taken it out of the context and talk about holistic by somebody else's definition. Yeah, Integrated in that context, not integrated by somebody else's definition. And that, I think, is what it is. Yeah. So last but not least, what is the learning lesson for this? I think this, I take it from Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs said a lot of people in our industry, including if you want to talk about education industry or our education sector, have not had a very diverse experience. So experience is important, and that's why I appreciate this word experiential in your in your in your seminar. 
you need to have the experience. You need to go out and dirty your hand and slog it out. You know, and so that you understand what the experience is. And because that is the one that makes you who you are. All right. And that's why I feel blessed that when I was a student, half of my time I spent outside of the classroom. Uh, I'm not a good student, but that's not that's not what I'm after. But anyway, I want to be a good person. A good student may not be a good person. Why? Because we don't have enough dots to connect. Our dot is probably the library and, and the and the and the desa. And the library and the resident. That's about the two dots that we can connect. Put us somewhere else, we are lost. In other words, Jakarta, you will end up in a very linear solution with a broader perspective of the problem. Indeed, now when you talk about problems in the society, it is a very broad problem, yeah? a very wide problem. And therefore, the one's understanding of the human experience becomes important because we can even design what we need to do. Now, not having this, it will be a kind of a liability for us. So in other words, to go into the community, you must have this. And this is something that we do when we were students. Year Satu, we go and work with the community, learn whatever it needs to be learned. Same thing, year two, year three, year four. And by the time you graduate, hopefully you learn something more beneficial than what you learn from the classroom. Yeah? Question is like this, if you don't have that experience, we meet another person who talks about the iceberg. Yeah, all you can imagine is this, because you have not seen an iceberg before. Sometimes, sometimes you have not even heard of iceberg before. Okay, okay, that's so. Your solution will be a glass, uh, something in a glass. Whereas this lady's solution probably is a whole world. How can you compete with her in terms of thinking? Because the solutions are not the same, because the contexts are not the same, because the understanding are not the same. This is what happened when you go to the company. The kampung is a widespread, open sort of university without paga. Here we are in a university in the paga with all sorts of rules, where, what can be done and what cannot be done. And sometimes the rules also lock down the mind at the same time. How do you change this? And you can only change this by experience what is there outside in, 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 the, in, in the community. Yeah? So this is what university is all about. We measure success in terms of uh, how many, what skills do we have, uh, what knowledge do we have? How marketable we are? Yeah, and our measures are all said. It is like the jungle that we talk. About. What is the goal? Yeah? What is the structure? What's the policy? Uh, what is the resources? You know, which technology do you use? This is all our discussion, right? Forgetting that if you go down, you've got different issues that you need to talk about. We can only discover this when you go down to the ground and mix with the people who are there. Yeah their belief system, their assumption, that's why we started with assumption just now, the kind of what angers them, what pleases them, what is good in their eyes, what is not good in their eyes, yeah? especially a very traditional conservative kampong, right? What are the value systems and how do you actually live with the, this value system? Is so-called uh, norma baru, yeah? And to some people, it's not a new norm, it's a renewed norm, a norm that was there before, but we have forgotten it for some reason or the other then we need to bring it back. So nothing is new in that sense. We just need to relive what we have forgotten. And these are the issues that we will discover the moment we interact with real people in real life, in the real life situation. Right, let me end up by saying, okay, so what we need to do now, we need to talk about community leadership. Yeah, I will then try to, 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 to make some sense of it. When you work on this, just the what, what do, do learning to know and learning to do your hand just on your in your brain, uh, you are just working at the level of what I call community service. This one we do when we were students, yeah. Uh, two, what you call a uh, bakti siswa, yeah. Uh, I remember this bakti siswa. Year satu pergi potong rumput, uh, you know. Two two weeks later, the rumput will tumbuh balik. And then we go and potong balik if you want to. Otherwise, never mind lah. Dah sudah dah. Dah dapat dua credit dah pun. So why do I need to cut again? If I need to cut again, I need another two more credit. If then no, no, no two more credit, then why do I need to cut? So uh, my my uh, ini, motivation was just the, the two credit, not the community. Yeah? The community is just happened to be there. So I want to get my two credit. Sorry, community. I get my two credit. Goodbye. Right? And that's a level of service. So many of us do this. Many of us think that we have done so much for the community that the, the chat even you must did, and some of us even do something which is difficult. I remember we built a sitting toilet at the, at one kampung. 
thinking that is a, a innovation for them. Yeah, when we come back, everybody do their business around the toilet, not on the toilet, because they don't know how to sit and do their business. They just know how to squat, right? So sometimes our solution are so not 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 uh, compatible enough and not good enough as far as that is concerned. Yeah? So here we are just talking about the tip of the iceberg. We have the skill, we have the knowledge, we have some inclination to do it, and that's about it. Yeah. But what we fail to understand is we fail to understand what is beyond that. Yeah. So that's part where I think we need to come into terms. And this is where the learning to be. Where the heart is involved, we understand what is under the iceberg with the 90% under the iceberg. That creates awareness, that creates motivation, that creates passion, that creates many things that is just beyond the two credits, that's beyond any instruction, that beyond any needs. It's because you want to be what you are. And this is what I call the community engagement. You really get engaged with the university on your own accord, not because, not because people forced you, not because you want to get some rank or something like that. It is out of your needs to do that because you want to be that better human person as an educator, as a student, or as just a, 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 a plain human being, all right? So if you can bring this together, it's even better, all right? So here is a way when you move out of the kampong, the kampong can survive on its own because they know how to live together. They're holistic, they're integrated, they've got the right values, they've got the right attitude. And this is what we, I think, the complete person is all about. They're able to deliver this, yeah? And able to actually uh, plant it or root it in the kampong. And this is what I think we should be going for. We should go beyond community engagement. You should go for community transformation. That is the ultimate for me where we talk about the whole university approach, the whole society approach, yeah? As much as we want to change the individual, we want to change the whole community so that the whole community do not depend on you anymore. They can survive on their own. They are the community that needs to be on their own to survive and that, yeah? So then I think the, the, the UNESCO just add another learning, learning to become, learning to become just that, to trans be transformational, to be sustainable and also to be that person that actually contributes without demanding any returns as far as as far as education is concerned. So we need to connect all the dots. Yeah. And when you talk about sustainable development, you need to connect all the 17 dots. Right. And you can see how complicated this is. If we just take this community vitality, all the dots that it needs to be connected. You cannot just connect one of poverty, anything you have done with it. No. Yeah. You cannot just take one until you've done, no. If you connect all the dots, then you can get this transformation. Otherwise, you are there at the level of service or the level of the engagement. They are not be able to sustain and within themselves, right? I just want to do very quickly what we have done using this model to, to transform into RIUM and the way we do community engagement. We are all very siloed at one point, yeah? There are many challenges that need to be solved, but we cannot solve it um, by using the siloed model. So we change that. So we work on being integrated in transitionary and the kind of exams, and there's no exams in fact, yeah? formative, summative, what they do in terms of project, the profile, get rid of the exams because the exams give you a different mindset altogether, right? And then we go to the committee, get it engaged or fully get it transformed. Some of them are in the, in the mode of transformation, meaning to say that we can walk out and, and the committee can survive on their own. Yeah? And this is where the, the research comes in, the responsible responsible research means we need to start off with them to start off with. We don't start in, in our lab and then tell them, we say, come, we want to do something. This is problem. How do you solve this? Let's do it together from day one until the end. That's what responsible research means. And then the solution and the, and the actions are oriented to their needs. Yeah? And we need to move out from our comfort zone. And that comfort zone is the one that changes us into that person that we want to be, that complete person we talk about. And this is now documented in our academic framework called the Sejahtera Academic Framework. All right. So we are running away from just the KPI because uh, Einstein says not everything can be counted counts. Not everything that counts can be counted. We are looking for anything that counts that cannot be counted. And these are about human values. Yeah? Nobody can count human values. We are not just talking about impact factor. We are talking about impact more importantly than the factor. The factor can be 10. You've got the factor of 10, I will ask them, how do you then impact this outside? If you cannot answer, then your, your 10 means nothing to me. All right? 
So you may have an impact of one, but you say this is how it transforms, then your impact factor one is better than impact factor 10 because you have got, you know, some significant uh, uh, impact on the ground in real life, in real, in real situation, right? And this is where I think we move. When I, when I say we got this uh, award, uh, sustainability award, this is what it is. The whole institution changed. It's a whole institution transformation rather than one com one compartment, one department, or one person, or something. The whole thing must come together. In other words, we have to connect the dots. Working together, working as a team, driven by a certain set of values is important, something that we have tried in USM and it works very well. Yeah. And finally, then it will transform it into the society that we want to do by humanizing education. So education is about making you a better human being, contributing to a, 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 a situation that needs your help, not about just marketability, getting jobs and getting well paid, but still the community is far from your mind, in fact, far from your heart. Yeah? Just to share you, this is a Sajato academic framework that is now being launched, and these are the mix of it. Here you have got the, 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 the Makasya Sharia there, Fasafa Pendidikan Kebangsaan there, you have the UNESCO value system there, and our own value system also inside it. All these are integrated into one, connecting the dots, as I mentioned to you, so that the entire student experience will be the one that converts that into what we call the Insan Sejahtera. Still in the making, but we are busy seeing fruits now. Our students are beginning to appreciate this, and I hope this will be the next, uh, the next sort of uh, area of uh, change as far as as far as uh, community engagement and need education as such. Yeah? So we are asking all the time, where is the community needs? You've got all these nice sophisticated words, where is all these needs? Sometimes these words are not good enough because we don't have that human heart. We are still the human capital, the heartless soul, and the heartless education or the soulless education as well. So things need to change. We need to move the things around. STEM is not good enough, stream we can include religious values, ethical values, artistic values, management values, not just science and technology, engineering and maths. How do you make this a holistic thing, transdisciplinary and making it into that insight suggestion that we talked about. Economy, yes, but the eco part. The eco means the environment, uh, the nature that you need to preserve rather than just ripping it off. Yeah? So hopefully that will be it, right? And hopefully also, that we are able to now create a university that lives truly as a community engaged university with instant suggestion as the kind of a, a outcome of this. So uh, thank you very much. Sorry if I take too much time uh, to, 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 to explain this, but certainly it's not an easy thing because it asks, uh, it requires us to uh, demonstrate, otherwise it becomes another uh, rhetorical talk, you know, everybody talks about this, but what is the action on the ground, what is the evidence on the ground, we are not able to do it, then nobody will buy into this. So thank you very much for your kind attention, thank you for the invitation, and thank you for living up to the ideals of uh, community engagement. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Majlis merakamkan setinggi-tinggi penghargaan kepada yang berbahagia Profesor Emeritus Tan Sri Datuk Zulkifli Abdul Razak di atas perkongsian sebentar tadi. Untuk makluman Tan Sri juga, uh, di ruang perbualan WebEx ini ada satu soalan. Mungkin hmm. uh, Tan Sri boleh menjawab soalan yang diberikan. Ah, okay. My only question is, how do we reconcile the expectation of parents who want to see their child excel academically and the industry needs manpower? How do we okay. tell them or change their mindset when they expect the university to deliver academic result only? Yes, exactly. When I was a, when I was an academic, maybe 50 years ago, when I joined in the University of Science Malaysia, mm -hmm. I joined the University of Science Malaysia for a particular reason. I know in university, I will set up my own agenda. I will leave my own ambition. I will do my what I need to do uh, without anybody telling me. That was the university then. Yeah? So one of the activities that we do every week without fail, we will go to the kampung and run a tuition class. When I became the leader of uh, the union, we, we in fact, the whole university becomes a tuition center. Tiap, tiap minggu kita entertain maybe 800 to 1,000 orang kampung datang ke universiti, duduk ke bilik kuliah kita dan kita mengajar di bahasa Inggeris, science dan mathematics. I don't know, some of the old ones may remember. And I was then called the guru besar. Um, it's almost like a sekolah, you know. 
So every week they will come and we will teach them because we know if we don't teach them, then on Monday when they go to class, they still don't understand and they get left behind far and further and further. Right. So in other words, we in the university needs to tell ourselves what is it that we need to do to work for the community. All right. And our the role to teach is not just the teach, it's not just the student. Ini kalau kita jadi guru, kita tidak kata saya ni guru hanya untuk sekolah saja. Saya guru untuk semua. Saya guru kepada orang yang tak memahami ataupun tak mahu memahami. That is my challenge. In fact, that's the worst a challenge. So when I meet with the minister, I will have to tell the minister, this is the right way of thinking. When I meet the KSU, I need to tell this is what we are doing. Whether he disagree or agree, that's a different question. We can debate on it. Debate and dissent is also part of the university business. Yeah? When we meet the parents, we need to tell the parents. After the parents tengok anak dia mengalami satu benda yang dia dapat, Yang sekarang ni dia tak ada. So, everybody is good in technology, but they're not good in their own self. Yeah? Dulu misalnya, when I was a kid, when I was a, a, a youngster, when my father look at me in one way, they, saya tahu something is wrong. I need to fix it. Apa yang tak kena ni? Bapa tengok saya ni apa yang tak kena. Now when I look at my child, uh, my my daughter and my son, I say tengok. Dia tanya, why are you looking at me? Dia tak dapat message that something is wrong. The subtleness is gone. Yang kata-kata ni orang Melayu berlapik ni dah tak ada lapik ni datang ke mana dah. We need to be very, very blunt with them. I think these are our role as an academician. To talk to the parents, this is when you go to the kampung, when the parents see you in the kampung, then the parents know what you are all about. You are not just in the aircon room giving lectures, but you are also down there to tell them what is life and how things need to move. And they appreciate your, your role as a guru beyond just that, you know, that names and the cliches and whatever that you are known for. You can advise them and they can also listen to, you can have a, a, a discussion with them and some of this discussion actually they have got the solution, is that they don't know how to put it and you don't know where to bring this. So we are become the convict, kita macam jadi wakil rakyat lah, cakap jadi this is the solution, jumpa DO, jumpa ni and stuff like that. That is our role. But are we playing that role now? I don't think so, because it's not part of our KPI. The KPI doesn't say how many uh, uh, parents have you engaged this week. I don't think part of our KPI is that way. Our uh, KPI say how many industry captains have you talked today? That is a KPI. So we are constrained by the things that we are told to do without us wanting to do what we want to do. I think that's the first thing that must go. That's the first thing that you must change. Otherwise, this committee engagement becomes another, you know, uh, nice thing on the shelf, but nothing will happen in the long run. Uh, ini nasib, uh, the, the, the vice chancellor is interested in committee engagement. Kalau the vice chancellor is not interested, they got it's a waste of time. I want to do something else. Let's build a rocket to the moon. Yeah, we can get better mileage. There are more journals that we can cover and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, you can go to the moon and tell the to the moon. What about the millions in the ground? Who cares? So these are issues that I think you need to surface. These are issues that you need to talk about. These are the issues that you need to you know, begin to articulate if you want to really work on community engagement. A lot of sacrifices, a lot of work to be done. And therefore, I think the role is ours. Kalau kita tak buat, we, have, we failed. We failed. And it's, it's, it's easy as that. We fail uh, to deliver what we're supposed to deliver. And for your young, young, younger, young generation, he, they will curse you. Yeah, Raji Nat Chancellor 11 tahun di USM, apa buatnya? Yeah, bertambah gemuk je lah. Motokar je tambah baru. Uh, all those things that they nampak from the outside, uh, internally they don't see you change at all. I think that's a price that you need to pay. You need to think about it very hard uh, before we move on. Is that okay, Fazila? Okay, ya Tok. Eh, thanks, sir. Okay, baik. Uh, di sini ada dua soalan lagi di ruang perbualan. Jadi saya bacakan yang pertama ni. Thank you for the time for sharing, Tan Sri Dato. I feel my contribution to the society was too small. How to start to do better? Silakan, Tan Sri. To, to learn from them. I think you start, I start from learning from them. I start by saying that I don't know much about you. I mean, macam kita pergi UK lah. Bila kita pergi UK, we don't, we don't want to teach them. We want to learn from them. When you go to the kampung orang asli, you want to learn from them. You don't go there and say, I've got the solution and this is how you're going to do it. 
Yeah. So by humbly submitting that you do not know, you want to learn from them, then suddenly you probably learn uh, more than things. Apa tu ambil kerchang tu sikit? Tak ada kerchang dekat bawah tu. This one I, I suddenly learn from 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 the from the orang asli punya punya apa tu? Uh, punya way of life. Ya. Yeah? Uh, dia, 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 dia boleh masak nasi dengan gunakan satu daun and that nasi will last for three days without basi. Kita masak nasi, setengah hari dah basi. Dia tidak. Because they want to travel, they want to masak, they cannot stop and masak all the time. Dia gunakan satu daun, dia bungkus, dia masak dan dia bawa tiga hari dia boleh makan tak tanpa basi. Now where do you get this knowledge? If you go there, uh, you can say that this is how I cook my rice. Bawa lah kita punya cooker, nak electricity pun tak ada. Yeah. And I want I want to tell you a story. Maybe Prof Asma will come on board. But this is a true story that Asma uh, was my deputy, a fantastic deputy on research. Yeah. And she came to me one day and kata, uh, I've done uh, what you call uh, uh, typhoid uh, vaccine. Asma, correct me if I'm wrong. But the typhoid vaccine, dulu, uh, how many days? They said, I can go, I can do this typhoid diagnosis in five days. Diagnosis, diagnostic test. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then we had we had a discussion. I say, uh, then I asked, uh, uh, if I bring this to the heart of Africa, will it solve the problem? Um, Masma said, no, because no cold chain, no electricity, no things like that. Uh, then the question, Tanya lagi, uh, what are you interested in? Are you interested in saving human life or are you interested in just commercialization and she said i alhamdulillah she said i am interested in in saving life but you got the commercialization the conversation ends good so if you're interested in life what, what else you need to do <laughs> so can you go back and find out whether you can get rid of this cold chain and stuff like that you know and certainly being being the able researcher they came back and said i've done this i don't need this cold chain and stuff like that you do the pcr yeah that's my the pcr is the word Yeah. Yeah. So, I remember yeah. the pregnancy yeah. testing, you yeah. pakai yeah. deep stick yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So now they got I can solve this uh, typhoid thing in, in, in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, something like that, not in five days. Uh, but she actually has got a problem. What's the problem? They got to, I want to be a professor, but I need to bring what three million in, into the coffer before I can apply for a professor. That's a level that USM adopt at that, at that time. Um, I cannot get this three million by just doing this PCR thing. And that's where I think we stop and say, look, why, how, can, how can I accommodate you? So I say, okay, for you, we change the rule of the game. For you, we will ask how many lives do you save, not how much money you bring. Uh. Right? And we agree on that. And for asthma, is how much life. And alhamdulillah, I think your, 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 your typhoid kit was taken by you, you, WHO. It right. was used, I think, around, around the world, 12 countries or something like that. And she says more lives than anybody else I can imagine. And one life, katela one life, three me three billion lah katanya. How many billion did I bawa lah? You can he can she buy can buy the whole university I mean, with that money, uh, not the three million the uh, you know, the the crumbs that we talked about. And this is how I think we should be thinking. Now, because if you think it's a stereotype idea, this is the only one that works. Why? Because Harvard does it. Why? Because Oxford does this way. And we have nothing to contribute. Then we are doomed. We are dead. Yeah, community engagement or no community engagement. We are just not the diversity that we are supposed to do and supposed to be. Okay, I, I want to show you the kerchang. This is the kerchang that I was talking about. Ada 18 ni. Dia ada tali ni. And I'm supposed to take this tali out in three steps. And give me, and then if uh, Professor Emeritus to do, do, do this in three steps. I cannot do it, man. I feel like surrendering back my uh, Emeritus Professorship. Dia panggil anak dia enam, enam, enam tahun dia buat, but three minutes dah habis. You know? Kalau anaknya tu... Apa ni, pandai bercakap agaknya, perah lah Profesor ni katanya. Dan kali bentuk dia. And they got 18 of this. And they got 18 of this. I mean, I think I want to sell a cap. Kalau Datuk Nasruddin for the new VC, boleh suruh dia soft ni tak? Kalau dia boleh soft, 18 ni dia jadi VC. Kalau tidak, dia tak boleh lah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Ini orang asli punya standard ni. Bukan kita punya standard ni. Not Harvard. A Harvard professor pun, I don't think they can do this, man. So, this is a wisdom that we need to understand is in that indigenous community that we look down upon thinking they're uncivilized and therefore we do their to do a service for them no i'm sorry you need to be humble enough to walk the the talk and then i think you learn from there inshallah so asma is ready i don't want to take her time 
Uh, I can see ideas bubbling from his uh, head. So thank you very much, USM. I'm part of USM. I still some kind of sasul cakap USM when you are imara. Uh, but yeah, we want to work together. And now <laughs> another USM guy there also. So inshallah, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, we are open to any sort of a collaboration that we can work together for the sake of the community and certainly for the sake of the country, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak uh, Tan Sri. Mungkin uh, Tuan Syed ada sedikit yang mungkin disampaikan kepada Tan Sri. Saya bersilakan. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Tan Sri, thank you very much. Uh, I just would like to express my sincere gratitude to you uh, for a very insightful and excellent sharing of uh, information. All right. I think um, uh, it is good to learn from the guru of CE. I think uh, as far as we are concerned, all right, so you are one of the best guru, a uh, CE guru in Malaysia. So thank you very much, Tan Sri, and I hope you will continue to support us in the future. Thank you very much, Tan Sri. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Take care. Have a nice time.